So, hi everyone, my name is Lenny Saldagno and I am a zoo archaeologist at the University of Sheffield. My passion, or really I should say obsession for archaeology, started when I was a little girl, I was six years old and I was at school. And that was the day in which the teacher explained to us what fossils are. And I was so amazed. And I remember going back home with a big smile on and looking forward to tell my parents everything I learned about fossils. In the following years, I cultivated my obsession, um, basically just harassing my parents all the time to make them buy me books. I wanted books. And I used to spend hours and hours looking at the pictures, you know, beautiful trilobites, harmonious ammonites. And these prints on the rocks that these creatures left, for me, were like a small window through which I could take a peek of the past. And it was so amazing for me. In the following years, though, I was in my teens and I started to change interests. At that point, I was more into psychology than archaeology, and archaeology ended up being a childhood dream. Until when, well, until when I met a weird woman. <laughs> so I was 17, and I was going out with this weird guy who decided to introduce me for the first time to his weird mother. <laughs> Why weird? Wait, it's coming. So he takes me to her place. And as soon as I enter the room, she looks at me and she says, you know, my dear, you have a beautiful orange aura around you. And that means that you are a very balanced person. And I thought, all right, OK. And then she said, do you mind if I read your palm? And I thought, OK, crikey, I didn't expect that. Anyway, she took me to another room, just me and her, and she started to scrutinize my palm. And after two minutes of awkward silence, she broke the silence and she said, you know, as soon as I looked at your hand, I had this picture of you, kind of an image of you, kind of like crawling in a very narrow and dusty place, like a kind of like a shaft or a tunnel. What do you want to be when you are older? Um, do you want to be an archaeologist? Well, I was gobsmacked because I had never talked to this woman before, and yet she could see my childhood dream. But I told her, you know, um, I was into archaeology when I was a child, but now I'm pretty much into psychology. And she said, well, you know, either way, you have to dig in order to find information. <laughs> And at that point, something clicked inside me, and the love for archaeology just re-emerged, magically. So um, the following year, I was 18, and it was uh, the time for me to decide what to do in my life. I had to go to university, and I was sure I had decided I wanted to be an archaeologist. So I went to uni, I took my course in archaeology, and it was around the end when I had to choose the topic of my dissertation that I had my first encounter with zoo archaeology. Zoo archaeology is the study of animal bones from archaeological sites in order to understand the human and animal relationship. And soon, during my studies, I realized that history written by men is mainly about men, humans. <laughs> And people tend to forget how important animals were for past societies. Uh, they were all around us. And I'm not talking about pets. I'm talking about livestock. You know, They were all around us. They were part of our daily experience, in a way. Um, their smells, their movements, their noises, you know, oink oinking pigs and mooing cows. And we had daily relationship with them. And one of the um, most important animals with which we had, well, a daily relationship in the past was the domestic pig. So the project I'm working on at the moment at the Department of Archaeology looks at how pigs and pig husbandry changed uh, from the 15th century onward in England as a result of the increased population that followed the plague of the 14th century. Now, 
more people meant more mouths to feed. So farmers started to introduce changes, innovation in their farming systems, like husbandry improvement, livestock improvement, and the adoption of uh, breeding strategies, because they wanted to produce more and meet the demand. Um, so when it comes to livestock, what they wanted to achieve was an improved livestock, and pigs were not left out from that process. Uh, in particular, what farmers were looking for was creating a nice pig, uh, fat, juicy pig, sorry vegans and vegetarians, uh, that could mature more quickly. And they achieved that by testing crossbreeding. Um, so these little changes that they slowly introduced are very important to us. Well, first of all, because they determined how pigs population, modern pigs population are now, but also because um, they determined our production system. Well, if you think about it, that was the very beginning on in, of intensive husbandry, which is a concept with which you know, we are very familiar nowadays. Right. So I guess at this point you are thinking, right, very interesting project, but how the hell can you tell all these things just by looking at some broken bones? Well, <laughs> prepare to be amazed because I'm going to take you through one of my days at work. So my day starts with an old dusty box, which I need to open in order to find all dusty bags which have inside old, dusty, broken bones. So the first thing that I do, I take a bag, I empty it, and magically a pile of bones appears along with a cloud of dust. So I need to wait a couple of minutes, you know, <laughs> just to be able to breathe and see again. And when finally the dust is gone, the fun starts, because for me, working with animal bones is like having to complete a puzzle. Every single fragment has information, and when you put the information together, just like puzzle pieces, a long faded image of the past reemerges, and it's just amazing for me. So going back to my pile of bones, what I do first is to pick out the bones that belong to pigs. And that, it's easier said than done, trust me. Uh, but thank God, I work in an amazing place, the Zoo Arc Lab, which is full of dead animals. Amazing. Well, I should say <laughs> skeletons, really, which are very helpful, especially when you have to identify broken bits and pieces. And then what I do, I try to identify from which part of the body that fragment comes from. Uh, has that may inform me about which kind of cuts of meat people were consuming. And then I look at cut marks and chop marks in order to see, um, to, to understand how the carcass was process, processed. And then if I have teeth, pig teeth in my bag, uh, I look at how warm they are, because that can tell me the age at which the animal was killed. And finally, if the bones are quite well preserved and not too fragmented, what I do, I take measurements. Now, behold, because you're going to meet my best friend. Hmm? It is my right hand. Where I go, it goes. Meet my calipers. <laughs> Now, with this little thing, I have a sort of like hate and love relationship. Hate mainly because when I use it for hours and hours, it gives me calluses, which is not nice, but you don't want to know about that. Anyway, measurements. So before coming to Sheffield, I didn't know how important are measurements in zoo archaeology. In my case, in my project in particular, measurements can confirm if my pigs were improved. So if they were bigger compared to previous periods, that means that livestock improvement took place. But the most amazing thing for me uh, about measurements is that when you combine them, they can describe shapes. 
So I will be able to tell if my pigs also looked different from pigs in previous periods and in which way. So were they stouter, were they slender, more slender? Did they have a longer snout or did they have a short snout? Is it not amazing what measurements can do for you? Amazing. Uh, so guys, this is what I do and this is who I am. I really love my job. And before leaving you to our last talk, I just want to answer to that one question that I know it's bugging you a lot, which is what happened to the weird boyfriend and the weird mother? <laughs> well, nothing happened. The relationship didn't work. But, surprisingly, <laughs> but I talk about what she said a lot. And, well, I don't really crawl in small and confined places every day. And I don't spend six months a year excavating in a field, moving soil from one part to the other. But I think she was damn right. I mean, I do dig to find information. It's just a different kind of digging. Thank you. Thank you.